Hello. I know that there's a lot of information coming at you as a new faculty member, so I'm going to try and front load some information for you. The why, what, and how of completing your compliance record and faculty success, and how to use the other required aspects of the software. As a function of House Bill 2504, or HB 2504, the state of Texas requires that all faculty list their post-secondary degrees in relevant academic and professional positions at scholarly research. This information is automatically uploaded to a public access website, which shows this information. Why? For transparency and clarity. Students and parents may wish to see who is teaching their course and what credentials they have. Similarly, in the event of a grade dispute, this protects you as the syllabus is historically archived online. As a part of this legislation, TT was required to maintain access and records while providing a consistent and stable means of collecting and reporting this information. Texas Tech has chosen faculty success, formerly digital measures, to comply with this requirement. As a new or returning faculty member, you will still be required to maintain this information. Just so you know, if you're returning to TTU, you'll find that any information in FS that previously applied to your record will carry forward. Or if you're coming from an institution that utilizes FS, you can have your data transferred. Email our support address for information, which is opa.support.t2.edu. What this means for you is that if you keep FS up to date, you'll have less work during end of year annual faculty reporting, and FS doesn't delete any data, so it will always be with you no matter what you need. And regularly, OPA will upload evaluation data and ORS grant publication data into your record automatically. FS then provides the ability to track your data and update your record at will, both for your tenure at TTU and if you go to another university. So what do you need to do before the deadline to, to, to be compliant? If you write this down and do it later, you will be golden if you make sure and do it early. First off, you need to make sure and list your post-secondary degrees in the Education and Postgraduate Training section. You also need to list your relevant academic and professional positions. We suggest three years, that's the requirement from House Bill, but list anything that you want to be represented. This is your way of representing yourself. List your relevant publications as well in the Scholarship and Research section. Only the past years, again, the past three years is required. So all of these screens in FS are generally going to work the same way. And so these are the steps. Once you're logged into faculty success, you should land on the screen that is highlighted in green on this page. That's your activities database. And this is just a screenshot. There's plenty more below that. But the first thing is this education and postgraduate training link that we want to look at. If you click that, you'll be taken to another screen that will probably be blank for you right now. But if you have other things already listed, then you'll see them there. You can click add new, and then you're taken to a general uh, screen for just entering information based on your degree, your location of institution, the institution itself, and your emphasis or major. The beauty of, S of FS is you'll never have to enter this information again until you have something to add or update. Now, many of you may have heard about the other compliance function of HB 2504, which is the syllabus requirement. Every undergraduate and eventually graduate course does require a syllabus to be uploaded into the FS system. FS then publishes the syllabus on the public access website. The other requirement is that you must upload a syllabus for each section of your course as well. Some departments may also have additional requirements. So now that you know the requirements, let's get into how to do all this. Um, to recap, your responsibilities in FS are to upload your education, professional history, and scholarly history before the semester begins. Two, to upload your syllabus each term. And three, to maintain your records through the year for annual reporting and hopefully promotion and tenure processes. At this point, I'm going to walk through how to use the FS system. You may have some differences on your screen, but the path you navigate should be almost identical. You can feel free to follow along or take notes and complete this later. The main thing you need to know is that the House Bill 2504 compliance deadline is the seventh class day of any given term. So as a new faculty, if you would be sure to upload your syllabus each term, you should always be in compliance. So let's start. First, you can log in via the OPA website by going to deps.t2.edu slash OPA and clicking the Faculty Success Formerly Digital Measures link at the top of the page. You'll see um, just some instructions in the middle. There's also a PDF guide for uploading the syllabus. There on the right side is also a list of upcoming dates and deadlines. And there's a black button that says Faculty Success Login. You can click that. Or you can also use the faculty portal of RaiderLink. And so if you look on this page, there is the faculty section. And then in the middle of the page, there's a faculty success formally digital measures link. You can click that and it should automatically log you in. At this point, if you have any issues logging in, it may be related to your account or to your account not yet being created. If that's the situation, please feel free to email our support email. Once you're logged in, you should land on a page that looks just almost like this. As I said, there may be some differences here that's based on college department and potentially your rank. But on this page, you'll see just a number of different 
links and screens that all pertain to the same general information, to teaching, to scholarship and research, to service, to outreach and engagement, and to annual report and review processes. The graduate student section is new and it may appear on your account, it may not. So the first thing that we were talking about was to upload your education and postgraduate training. So if you click this link, again, you'll be taken to a page that, if you already have data here, will reveal the um, information that you've entered. You can click Add New in order to add one, or you can click on any of the information here to go into that entry. And you can edit these as you uh, feel is appropriate. You can go back or click Cancel. But right now, we just want to look at adding new. And so if you click Add New, you'll notice a few things. First is the viewable on public access website. This is another part of the House Bill 2504 legislation, which requires this information to be findable from the main website of TTU without a login and within three clicks of the main website. And this is a part of the legislation, again, to allow this information to be freely available to the public and easily findable. This generally is not able to be changed unless there's a, a specific reason. All you're going to do is go through each of the uh, informational sections here. So the degree, you would just pick what your degree is. You can enter the institution. This question comes up a lot. And so you know, there's a uh, some questions will have a help bubble. Here, and if you click that, it'll give you some information. And so this is telling us that the institution list is not comprehensive. Um, there are far too many institutions for us to be able to do that. And so what we have here instead are a number of institutions that are selected through the TTU University Strategic Plan which includes Big 12, Carnegie Highest Research Institutions, NREF Competitors, and AAU, or American Aspirational Universities. Once you've selected and entered the information that you have, and you've made sure to enter the year completed as well, you can click Save, or you can click Save and Add New if you want to add another entry. What you'll find in FS is that almost all data entry is going to be very similar to this process. So I'm just going to go back by clicking Cancel, or you can even go back by clicking Activities. The next thing that you would want to update is going to be your academic and professional positions. This information, again, should go back three years. And you can just click Add New and begin adding relevant information. It's important to note that House Bill is related to faculty credentialing and proving the credibility of a faculty member teaching a certain discipline. So with that in mind, certain academic and uh, professional positions may not pertain to your teaching record, in which case you can feel free to omit them. Generally speaking, though, you want to have a complete record for what is being used to prove your credibility or your credentials as a faculty member. So please at least enter the past three years and, and keep this up to date as you continue through Texas Tech. So we're going to go back again, and there's a uh, process here to actually work with the scholarship and research section, which is, again, an important aspect of House Bill 2504. But because there's a lot of uh, complexity with that process, I want to first look at the scheduled teaching section. If you click this section, and you'll see a course listed for you or a number of courses listed for you if you've already been teaching or if you've already been registered as instructor for a course. Or you may not see anything here, in which case your course hasn't quite been attached to your record. If this is the case, it's just a, a part of the process. It just takes time. Once students are registered in your course and once you've been added as an instructor, it should appear here. If it doesn't appear and it's early in the semester, you might check with your course scheduler first and check banner to be sure that you are listed. But otherwise, you can email opa.support at ttu.edu. All information in faculty success is either self-reported or originates from Banner. So you never want to add new in the scheduled teaching section because this information is always coming from the scheduled teaching record from Texas Tech. So if you click on any of your courses, then what you'll find is some information that is read-only, and you might see that with an R. Some information you won't see at all, which is denoted by an H. And then other information will be just like anything else where you can type, you can you know, edit things. We ask that you don't edit the enrollment number on your own because this is, uh, it does come from Banner, and so we do check that against Banner. Um, but any of these other questions uh, may be important for your department or they may not be used. It's just a question of how your department is, um, is utilizing software. But the main thing that I want to show on this screen is down here at the very bottom of the page. And what you'll find is that there is a a box here to drop, uh, drop a syllabus or select one to upload. And so it's quite easy to actually um, open up a file and simply just drag this over. Or you can click on the question and you can uh, just select it this way as well. So that's all that's required. Oh, I'm sorry. And you should be sure to save as well. That's all that's required for uploading syllabus. 
And so you do need to do that for any of your sections that you're listed for in a given semester. But overall, that's the general process for uploading that syllabus. Now, when it comes to updating relevant publications, again, this is a part of the House Bill 2504 requirement that you list your past three years of scholarly activity um, and that you can continue to update your scholarly record as you continue as an instructor at Texas Tech. And so if you click on a relevant screen here to what you are going to be working with, um, most instructors are going to be using the intellectual contribution screen. This pertains to books, journal articles, um, you know, pretty much anything that is written and published. Um, the artistic and professional performances and exhibits uh, often um, are going to be about uh, curated exhibits, um, performances such as uh, plays or um, you know, theater uh, performances, and then of course presentations, any kind of presentation or anything like that. The contracts, grants, and sponsored research, uh, feel free to update this information as well, but we do perform an import from the ORS database or CAIUSE. But with any of these, what you can do is go into them, and we're going to use the intellectual contributions. And what you'll see are just a couple of entries if you have anything or, you know, maybe blank. You can click Add New, and this is the manual way of entering a citation. And so you can enter the contribution type, status, title, uh, additional authors, any kind of information that pertains, and then just click Save like any other screen and digital measures. But there are a couple of things I want to bring out that are really important to this process. And um, the first is going to be this pasteboard. And this is really helpful um, if you're ever going to be um, working within the faculty success software for a large period of time. This is kind of like a sticky note that sticks on your screen. And so you can take it with you. You can copy and paste into different um, areas of digital measures. And it will just always be there no matter what screen you're, um, you're going into. Um, and notice that while I'm demonstrating this, you know, any of these screens can be activated and gone into and looked at. Until you click save, no information is going to change. So feel free to explore any of the faculty success interface. So going back to the intellectual contribution screen, this is going to be one of your more important parts of the process, is if you click import, um, faculty success and Watermark have paired together with a few different third-party databases, and they have also developed a way to import the text files or citation files in order to uh, extract the process of listing your scholarly research and activity and faculty success. So by importing a bit text file, you can simply choose file and upload. Or by importing to a third party, you can select a service, Scopus, Web of Science, Crossref, Orchid, or PubMed, entering your search criteria. Uh, generally, author name is a good way of searching, and then just a year range. And what will happen is by searching that, you will be able to find a list of um, citations that fit those criteria that probably pertain to you or that may pertain to someone with a similar last name, at which point you can select your scholarly activity and select to import it into the system automatically. This process can be a little bit nuanced. Um, it can be a little bit difficult to identify exactly which screen or, or which um, selection to make on some certain questions. And so if you ever have any questions or if you want some assistance with this process, please feel free to reach out to Hopla. Another aspect of the publication import is going to be something here that says CV imports. Now, this is a new process that has been added into the system fairly recently, and it allows you to upload a document and highlight content, review it, and upload it into the system. Now, this service can be a little bit challenging for a new faculty member, as you may not be entirely aware of where, again, certain metrics may need to go in your software and your record. And so what OPA has done is developed a new service called CV Services, where if you have a, a dot, .docx file or an RTF file, we will handle that for you. We will update your information to include um, at least your most recent publications, professional positions, your educational history, um, in order to be compliant with House Bill 2504. And so if you would like to take advantage of that service, please reach out to us. Um, we would love to, uh, to be able to assist. Now, lastly, on this page is going to be this rapid reports page. And this is very helpful because this is how you're going to run your annual faculty report or any other reports that may pertain to you. So if you click that button, you get a dialog box that pops up. And in this situation, mine defaulted to an annual faculty report for a department, but you can click the drop down and select any of the reports here in order to extract your data or to run a report on it. Um, in this case, I'm just going to do a, um, a general annual faculty report with a start date of the previous year. You can select your file format. Other reports may have other options as well. And then if you simply click run, then the software will generate a PDF that explains your annual faculty report starting with your college and department. You can see we have some test entries already entered here. And that's pretty much it. That's how you run a, a wrapped report, and that's how you can run your annual faculty report as well.
So thank you so much. Um, we know that this can be a challenging process. We know that it can sometimes be difficult finding time to enter your data and to update your record for, um, you know, for compliance, something that um, may not always be a, a high priority, but you really want to help um, and assist in any way that we possibly can. Um, so we just want to say from everyone at the Office of Planning and Assessment, welcome to Texas Tech. Thank you so much for your time. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact open.support at ttu.edu or you can visit our website at depths.t2.edu slash open. Thank you.